In our previous webinar, we talked about classifications of cryptocurrency. We talked about, uh, we looked at exchange overview and we talked about Satoshi value and Bitcoin calculations. And we went to CoinMarketCap, which is an aggregate website for crypto. Today, we'll be looking at, please mute your mic, please, so that everyone can hear me. Today, we'll be looking at other things, which is continuation of what we did last two days ago. Okay, so I need you to pay close attention. If you, if you were bored in the last webinar, I'm so sorry about that, but I'll make today's zone to be very simple and quick so that you can comprehend everything I'm going to show you. All right, we'll be talking of types of trading, okay? Majorly, we have two types of trading, short-term trading and long-term trading. Short-term trading, however, is all, in, all about instant gains. It involves looking for market movements within the shortest period. It can be as quick as within minutes or hours. One can easily buy and sell the asset several times within a day. Now, short-term trading is a kind of trading that you do maybe on daily basis, weekly basis. Okay, before I forget, on that short-term trading, we have other kinds of trading also, okay? But that we'll talk about those kind of trading on that short-term trading, maybe in our next class, the same thing with long-term trading. But to make this easy for you to comprehend, just put your mind that we have just two major types of trading, which is short-term trading and long-term trading. So in short-term trading, uh, it's more tedious to do short-term trading, especially someone who is trying to earn a living from trading, like you, you don't have other means of income, you want to solely depend on trading then, and maybe you have a small capital. If you are doing short-term trading, it's going to be more time consuming as it will require you to be in the market every minute, if not seconds, trying to figure out and make your trading decisions so that you can be able to earn at least some money before the day runs out. Okay, short-term trading include weekly trading to monthly trading. So that is just basically short-term trading, just a trade that doesn't take long. You enter the trade and you close the trade within a short period of time, okay? Then we have long-term trading. Long-term trading, in other words, can equally be considered as an investment, okay? Because long-term tra trading starts from six months up to even 10, 15 years. It depends on your trading uh, decision and expectations, okay? Just like someone like me now, I have some BTC in my position and those BTC, I don't see myself selling them in the next one year self or in two years, okay? So it's considered as a long-term trader and also an investment. So that is just basically two types of trading we have. Then we have arbitrage trading, okay? This arbitrage, is under short-term trade. But while I picked it out is so that you really know what it is and understand it. This type of trading capitalizes on imbalances in prices between markets. Simply put, this is when an asset is internally bought and sold into market, often because they are being sold at slightly different prices. Okay, so this arbitrary trading is a kind of trading that involves two marketplace, two exchange, two groups sometimes. Sometimes people that arbitrage can belong to many WhatsApp group where they buy and sell, okay? They buy from a different group and they sell in another group. But your gain is in between the price differences. Example of this arbitrage is sometimes you can notice that Binance might be selling Bitcoin at $50,000 per one while Luno is selling Bitcoin at $50,050, okay? So if you buy from Binance and you sell in Luno, it means you just made $50 from Luno, okay? Just that the problem with arbitraging is 
arbitraging opportunities are rare. It's difficult to figure out arbitrage opportunities, okay? Because the charges you might pay a loan to push that BTC from Binance to Luno might cost you more than you can ever gain from that arbitrage opportunity. But arbitrage opportunity is an opportunity that when you get it, it's worth it. It's worth it, okay? So most of us, sometimes we arbitrate already. Sometimes you buy from people, you sell to other people, just like uh, if you're able to get somebody that is from all these Ponzi scheme, uh, a system like Fossard, MMM, Chimo, <laughs> sorry, if you might wonder why I call Chimo Ponzi scheme, but that is maybe during question and answer, I will explain more about that. Now, if you get people that participate in this kind of systems, all right, and they are earning these coins because of the investment they've done in any of these system, sometimes they, they sell these coins cheap to you. The reason why they sell it cheap is because they end it, okay? So since they end it, uh, is an added percentage to their capital. So they wouldn't want to waste much time in prices, but a core trader is very hard to easily sell a coin just like that, okay? So you can buy from those people that participate from all this system and you sell to ordinary person who want to still use it for something else. So that is equally arbitrage. Now you can even buy from those people at a cheaper rate and even sell in Luno in a different price. Okay. So that is for arbitrage. Then we'll be talking about building crypto asset uh, portfolio. Okay. Building crypto asset portfolio is very, very important. Please pay close attention. And also don't feel that this is a free class. And because it's a free class, maybe Don is giving you what's uh, just free knowledge. What you are learning today is a premium course, okay? This is part of my course that you are learning today. So everything you see here, take it very, very serious and jot them down. They are very, very good and they will set you on the right path on this space. Now, what is crypto portfolio? Crypto asset portfolio means investing in a range of different assets to reduce the overall risk of your investment. In other words, portfolio building is a fancy way of saying, do not put all your eggs in one basket. If you are to invest in Bitcoin, the value of your investment portfolio would fluctuate greatly and could go to zero if Bitcoin goes down to a dollar. Okay, however, if you are to invest in Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Tron, Zcash, and Bitcoin, you can benefit from the potentially strong performance of the Bitcoin stock while reducing your risk by diversifying into established crypto assets. What this whole grammar means is instead of buying just Bitcoin, okay, as a trader or as an investor, it's better you divide your money and buy many, many, many coins, at least two, three coins. The, the difference is, example now, you bought BTC, maybe at $50,000, and after one week, two weeks, one month, BTC dropped to $25,000. Now you've lost 50% of your capital instantly, okay? But if you purchase BTC with some part of that money and you purchase the Ethereum and BTC is dropping, but Ethereum is not dropping. You'll find out that Ethereum might even be increasing in price. Then you find out that there is, there is a balancing, okay? The Ethereum uh, increase is balancing that uh, downward movement BTC is giving you. So you might find out that it's the let it be that you did not make gain, but at least the, your capital remains your capital, okay? So this is just, just understand it like, uh, don't put your egg in the same basket, in one basket, just separate your eggs, okay? How to build a cryptocurrency portfolio? Now that I have explained what building portfolio is, let's talk about how to build a diversified cryptocurrency portfolio. For example, you could build a portfolio composed of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, Tron, where Bitcoin remains at 30%, Stablecoin 20%, and the remaining five assets are equally weighed at 10% differently. You can see I mentioned stable coins here. 
uh, if you remember in our last class, I explained what stable coins are. <clears throat> okay, these are coins that don't move. They remain at their price. No uh, increase, no decrease. All right. So I prepared a sample portfolio to show you what uh, I'm talking about. Okay, to explain it to you better. Now, what I have built here, okay, is a portfolio comprising of uh, how many coins? I think seven coins, okay? Now, <clears throat> pay close attention. Let's assume I'm taking $10,000 to be my portfolio capital, okay? Maybe I have $10,000 to trade or to invest in cryptocurrency. Now to trade, I have $10,000 to trade. And being that I, I fully understand what I'm doing in the market, okay? So I will take, 30% of this $10,000, which is $3,000, okay? This is $3,000 and put it in BTC, okay? So I'll use $3,000 of this $10,000 and buy BTC. Then I'll use 20%. You can see stablecoin is having 20% here, which means I will use $2,000. Please focus on what I'm saying and forget what I'm drawing on. I'm using $2,000 now to buy stable coin. Now, what I have succeeded in doing is I have put $5,000 into Bitcoin and stable coin. Please mute your mic if you join. Now I have ended up using $5,000 out of the total money I want to use and trade and buy $3,000 BTC, $2,000 stable coin. Then the remaining $5,000, I will divide it evenly 10 10% for these five coins. Okay, buying, buying $1,000 each of these five coins. Now I have built a standard portfolio that will stand the test of time. Even if crypto like let it fall greatly today, I will remain in profit or my money will remain for me and I will not lose it. You might ask, why did I buy stable coin? Why did I put a whole $3,000 only in BTC? Okay, like I showed you in our last lesson, uh, BTC dominance is having 60.1%, okay? It means that total money, total circulation of cryptocurrency, even as we're having 8,000 plus, close to 9,000 cryptocurrency in the world, Bitcoin is the most traded coin. So what it means is that Bitcoin has achieved a certain level that this coin can no longer vanish out of uh, in a thin air. Like you can wake up one day and Bitcoin is no longer there. So that alone is a kind of stability and security for you as a trader. Also, every other cryptocurrency in the world is being purchased or valued against Bitcoin. Okay, so once you have put 30% Bitcoin to your portfolio, okay, you have the edge over an ordinary trader. The reason is because Bitcoin controls the market entirely. You see crypto space, Bitcoin controls crypto space entirely. Sometimes if Bitcoin increase, most of these coins will start increasing. If it falls, most of these coins will start falling. The reason is because people are using Bitcoin to buy any of these coins you see. So it simply means that when Bitcoin starts rising, it means people are putting more Bitcoin to other coins. People are buying more Bitcoin to acquire other coins. Then when I see BTC going down, it simply means people are taking out their money in Bitcoins, okay? So Bitcoins controls the market and the more uh, dominated a coin is, the higher the dominance, lesser the volatility of that coin. Let me give you an example. Tron now, a coin like Tron could move within, two, within one month, a, a coin like Tron could move within one month to maybe 20, 30% or 100% or 200%. But Bitcoin as of now, can hardly achieve that within that short period of time. Why? Because a lot of investors are already in Bitcoin. So the more people are buying into this coin, the less volatility it will become. There's a time it will reach, Bitcoin movement will slow, will be so, so slow. Like if you notice, a bit, if, if, if you have been in the market, you will understand that Bitcoin doesn't move like every other coin. 
Bitcoin can remain at a particular price for like six moons. It will just go up, come down, but it might remain like maybe, let's say $50,000 for sometimes. Forget what is happening now. Okay, so it's just like beginning of, ending of 2 19 20, 20, first week, uh, first beginning of 2020 to middle of 2020, Bitcoin was less than $20,000. And it remained in that price for a very long time, reaching middle of the year to towards ending of 2020, Bitcoin started shooting up. Okay, then entering 2021, Bitcoin hit all time high of $57,000 uh, $57, per one. The reason is because a lot of investors, because of COVID-19, dived into the space, all right? And they started buying Bitcoin. That was why Bitcoin was able to make that drastic move. But on normal, the coin is having high dominance and its fluctuation rate has dropped. So you having it in your portfolio at 30% helps you balance your portfolio. Now, a stable coin, you might ask, why did I put 20% on a stable coin? Okay, since this coin does not increase, this coin does not fall. You now, as a trader, why do you need a coin that doesn't move? Since it will not make you any gain. <laughs> okay, pay close attention. The reason why you are putting 20% of your portfolio in a stable coin is so that if tomorrow uh, I come in the group and say, okay, I have a buy signal for you, buy this coin, you don't need to sell off any other coin you have. What do you do? You simply go to that stable coin you have, which is uh, maybe you use USDT, you take out money from that 20% and buy. Now, what it has saved you is it has saved you from losing other trade you're already in at the moment. Because if you're having this other coin, let's assume you had uh, Ethereum, okay? You bought Ethereum at $1,000 and Ethereum dropped at $500. And I came to the group and dropped signal. Maybe I dropped buy signal for you to buy a coin. And you don't even have any other money. The only money you have is already in Ethereum, a repo, and you are like you have that interest to buy that coin I drop. You'll find that you end up going to go and sell Ethereum. And if you sell Ethereum, you have lost five hundred dollars, okay? Because you bought this coin at one thousand dollars and it dropped to five hundred dollars. Why you are still expecting it to go back to one thousand? Okay. Now I drop a signal and you went and sell off because you want to buy the new coin what you have done is even worse than not buying that signal. Because if you left that signal, this Ethereum you bought could become $2,000 in the next one week. But now you will go and sell it running at 50% loss just to buy a new coin. But if you have a portfolio like what I'm showing you now, you don't need to touch this Ethereum. You see this set, you don't need to touch them. If I drop a new coin for you, you will simply take out money from this 20% stable coin here and buy the new coin and your portfolio is balanced. You don't need to shake in the market. You are not a baby. Let me point out something for you. I, for one, I don't gamble in the space. I'm not in that game of, ah, this coin is going up, I want to buy, no. And that is not what I'm training you for. I'm training you to become a master of the game, to know what you are doing and not shaking every now and then, okay? So that is why you need to maintain this portfolio if you must profit. What I'm showing you today could help you grow $100, $100 to $50,000, $100,000. Okay, you might see it, you might say, okay, it doesn't worth it. <laughs> I want to tell you that within the years, okay, many has got, you see, somebody can dive into the market sometimes with $50,000, $100,000, okay? But if you are not good with portfolio management, you will get liquidated in the market. And there is a reckless attitude you will display in the space, you will forever regret it in your life. You will hate crypto entirely, okay? I have a friend, this guy, he, he had a land in Port Harcourt, okay, around Jerry. If you know Port Harcourt very well, you know that Jerry is a hot kick. I think he sold that land almost to 85 millionary plot. He dived into crypto because a friend told him he bought Range Rover Evoke from Bitcoin investments. He dived into it, purchased Bitcoin with the whole money. Now, what happened? After two weeks, BTC dropped, okay? Leaving that guy with 30% of his money. The guy was really mad. Like, 
he is like, this is a scam. He, then nobody told him about it. And he, he had to sell off the remaining one he has and went away. Since then, to date, he, he always tell you that he don't believe in crypto because of that reckless attitude, all right? The reason why it happened like that for him is because it happened that way because he don't know what he's doing. He dived into the market. He dived into the market because he was hearing people saying, I made money, I made money, I made money. And he don't know what is happening. He don't have the knowledge. He, he, so in fact, he, don't just, he just wants to make money and he dived into it, buying Bitcoin at a very high rate. All right? Then what happens, Bitcoin will have to fall because everything that goes up will have to come down. So when it came down, it affected him greatly because he don't know what he was doing. So I'm not training you to become such a person. And I'm saying this now because you might overlook this portfolio and tomorrow you might be like, ah, this is not what I expected. Please and please, okay? Maintain a good portfolio. It's very, very, it's very, very important so that you know what you are doing in this space. Okay, I believe I have explained this to your understanding. We have to move on. You can ask your question after now. <clears throat> now, what gives a coin or crypto asset a value? You might ask, why is Bitcoin increasing in price? What gives it value? That is a question. What gives crypto asset a value? Why is Ethereum increasing in price? Is people eating with Ethereum? Can you put it in your pot and cook? What gives it a, price, a, a value? Now, we have seven things, seven major things that gives a coin a value. One is the development team, okay? The development team gives a coin a value in the sense that when people find out who and who is behind this project, this coin, who are the owners? What have they done before? Now, those people behind it and how serious the development team is, even if nobody knows them, but how eager they are to come out and defend their project and present their ideas will, will not like pass a message to investor like, oh, these people really have a good uh, plan on ground. And I think I trust them and people will start investing into it. That is why these coins gain a value. Now you might say, what of Bitcoin that the owner is not known? Yes, the owner of Bitcoin is not known because Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency in the world, disrupting the centralization of the world, which means it needs to be anonymous because if it's not anonymous, they can persecute the creators. And if that happens, the government will end up killing that dream. So that is why it's anonymous. But after Bitcoin, any other coin you see that is claiming anonymity, please stay away from it. Ethereum, the developers and the owners are well known. All right? Repo, the same thing. Measure, in fact, most coins. So when you are looking at a coin, ensure that the development team are people that, okay, you can see their names, you, you see their videos, you see what they are doing. At least that gives you this mindset that, yeah, this, this is what investing in. All right? Another thing that gives a crypto asset or cryptocurrency a value is security of crypto assets. How secured is this coin? How secured? Is it, is it, are they just advertising something for me to buy that tomorrow it will no longer be in the market? Tomorrow my money is gone. How secured is it? That is what gives it a value. Okay, how secured and trusted that coin is will not motivate many persons to invest in it. And you know what happens? Immediately investors engage, the price goes up. Continuous updates. Now every company or every firm upgrade over time, all right? Some, some companies, you know, started from a particular product at a point, they dropped that product and started creating another product entirely, okay? Some, they were using a particular logo, they had to drop that logo and start using that logo. Continuous updates, okay? Very, very important. When a coin 
or cryptocurrency is continuously updating, adding more features, advancing at least to meet up the market demand and the future uh, technology requirements, then people are eager to invest in such coins because they are seeing that, yes, these people are trying to meet up with the current development. All right. Fourth, uh, the number four, we have coin supply. Coin supply. Now, coin supply matters. There are coins that has large, large supply. Okay, Bitcoin just have 21 million coin. There cannot be more than 21 million Bitcoin existing in the world. You can never have more than 21 million Bitcoin existing. Okay, and currently 18 point something million is already existing. It's already in supply, I mean to say. Which means once 21 million, of, once 21 million Bitcoin is out, and imagine if 21 million persons in the world has one Bitcoin, it means that Bitcoin, the scarcity will be so high. And what happened? The price will shoot up. Okay, so the coin supply matters. A coin like Tron, Tron is having almost, <laughs> is up to 10, 10 billion supply. So Tron would, in fact, it would be so hard for Tron to hit $1. Talk more of hitting two dollars or five dollars, okay? Because the supply is high. So the smaller the supply, the more the demand. Also, don't be don't be carried away by scammers, okay? Scammers come in the space. They create a coin that might just have hundred supply, and the coin will shoot overnight, even up to two thousand five, ten thousand dollars, okay? What they are just trying to do is they are trying to attract investors, and when investors come in, they abandon that coin and go. So. When you are checking a coin supply, at least, at least you should look at from 10 million supply down to maybe for me, I always look at maybe 100 million or 200 million. Okay. Is, is very, very okay. But the smaller the supply, the more value that coin is going to have. Then we have branding and strategy. Now, branding like blockchain. Uh, blockchain wallets uh, all of a sudden changed its logo to a different final logo. People were amazed. People started downloading the wallet. Now we have uh, a, a coin called SVS, SVC. Yes, no, SVS. SVS, after, after a little while, they changed their branding to NVS. Okay, so everybody was so happy. They brought in more features and they want to maybe meet up the current market demand. So branding help these coins gain what? Gain value. Strategy also, devising a strategy to meet up the challenges and continue solving the solution they are solving in the space matters a lot. For example, Ethereum network is highly congested as we speak because Ethereum confirms just 25 transactions per second. Okay, now imagine the whole world transacting with Ethereum. So the network is highly congested because it's taking longer time to confirm transaction. Also, miners in Ethereum is charging ridiculously high. Just imagine sending $20 and you're paying charges of $80. It doesn't worth it, okay? So because of that, Ethereum devised another strategy of uh, rebranding and advancing Ethereum by launching Ethereum 2.0. Now, Ethereum 2.0 will be all confirming, I think, almost 2,000 transactions per second, okay? And it's not going to... They, they, <clears throat> Ethereum will no longer work with miners, okay? Ethereum will work with what we know as proof of stake, which you have to now stake your Ethereum to confirm transaction in the uh, blockchain. So that alone is keeping investors pending for Ethereum. It's true their transaction rate is high, but many are waiting for them to finalize their project and launch that 2.0 so that the transaction fee will drop and the coin will be out. Yet, even with that high gas fee, you see Ethereum price keeps shooting up. Why? Because the branding and the strategy is awesome. Now, history, history matters a lot in all this coin. Bitcoin has created history, okay? Since 2008, when it was introduced and finally launched in 2009, now Bitcoin has been in this space. It has stand test of time. That history alone is making many persons now say, oh, I think this coin is, is worth investing in. It has been there for a long time. 
Okay, but when a coin just came and vanished, please, if it comes back, nobody is going to invest, invest in it. There's no how he's going to give a value to that crypto asset. So history matters a lot. Okay, then application and industry, very, very important. Application, use cases of this coin. What are these coins meant for? What are they used for? It's these things determines the prices, the value people see in these coins. Okay, example, Bitcoin is solely created to serve as a payment uh, coin. Bitcoin does not offer any other thing aside serving as a means of payment. So that application and industry, which is industry of money processing is very, very highly in demand in the world. All right, now, why Bitcoin is so, so nice is that is the very first coin to come with such a solution in the world. And there is no how it's not going to have a value. All right. Then you look at Ethereum. Ethereum came with decentralized finance and decentralized applications and smart contracts. All right. Which has never been there. Ethereum came and said, OK, you see those uh, contracts you people go and sign face to face. You need middleman. No, we keep it off. Now you can write a code that nobody can modify and the contract will stand. Even if anybody dies, the contract remains the contract. Now, people dived into Ethereum, started creating smart contracts. Why? Because Ethereum presented a very nice solution and the use cases are numerous. The application of that technology is highly in demand. Okay? So that is what gives coin a value. So from today, understand that these things combined together is what gives all this coin a value, okay? So that you wouldn't be confused of why is the price shooting up or why is the price, why is this coin getting a price? Why is it not low from today? Think differently and understand it better, all right? Now, uh, this is question and answer section, but I have a bonus to give you people for today's lesson. So I'll be going over to Binance. All right, I'll be going over to Binance to, I need to show you how to buy and sell in Binance so that I can, you can know better. Okay. I hope you can all see my browser. Can you see my browser? Yes. Okay, this is Binance. If you don't have a Binance account, please try and create a Binance account. It's very, very important. And it's one of the best exchange in the world. So I will quickly show you how to buy and sell in Binance. And I will explain some little more about this exchange so that you will understand. Like I said in the previous uh, webinar we have that in our next lesson, I will show you more about this exchange. Now, when you come on this trade session, I believe you already know this interface because I did a walkover of this in our last webinar. If you come here, this is Binance homepage. You, you already know this. If you come on trade section, you see classic, okay? If you click on classic, this is Binance classic trading interface, which you already, I showed it that day. This is the other book. The red, the red orders are the selling orders, while the green orders are the buying orders. Then this is the charts, okay? But forget about this chart. Don't get intimidated about this chart. Just forget it. We can trash it and it to become like ABC for you. Then here we have markets. You see different coins and their pairs. Then personally, I don't use this classic section because it's more elementary. And I, I use advanced. It's, it's the same thing, just that there is a kind of uh, more compression in the advanced and the charts. They give the charts 
more space to be more visible, okay? It's the same thing, just that this one is more advanced, like they said, like you can see, you, this red orders is the selling orders and this is the buying orders, all right? Then you see here, where you see BTC USDT is where you select the coins. Why in classic before, classic I showed you, the market was here, but here is here you click and the market will be will drop down for you and you can select, you can see as I'm scrolling down, it keep scrolling. So don't get it, don't get confused, okay? Now, <clears throat> here is where you see the coin you are trading. This is BTC USDT, okay? The coin in your right side is considered as the base currency. A base currency is a coin you are using to buy this one, which means I will be buying BTC using USDT, okay? And I will be selling BTC to get USDT. Example of this thing I have said now is Naira. You have your Naira, okay? And you have a vehicle. You have Toyota Camry. You can use Naira to buy Toyota Camry, but you can't use Toyota Camry to buy Naira. Rather, you sell Toyota Camry to get Naira. I will get again. You buy Naira, you buy Toyota Camry using Naira, but you can't buy Naira with Toyota Camry. Rather, you have to sell Toyota Camry to get Naira. So what it means is you buy BTC. This pair simply means that you are buying BTC using USDT and you will sell BTC to get USDT. So it means that the, the money you really need here, the coin you really need in this exchange to buy is this USDT, okay? You can change it to any other uh, pair you want. So let me put, okay, one inch BTC. I have just changed it now to one inch BTC. What it simply means is I will be buying one inch using BTC and I will be selling BTC to, I'll, sorry, and I'll be selling one inch to get BTC. <laughs> so I just hope you understand what I mean. So that is what yes. is happening here. Okay, then you can easily, you can easily change search any coin you want here, any coin at all. If I search there, I will see there. Then if you check here, I hope, is this Binance, is, is it too dark for you? I hope you are seeing it. If I make it light. Okay. Better now, right? Yes, better. Thank you. All right. Now, this is where you change the coin. Okay. You can see if I click on it, it gives me a drop down of the market. I can select the peer I want to trade here. I can just search maybe XRP. XRP is Ripple. Then you are going to see different peers. The first one here is XRP stroke US uh, BTC, which means I can buy XRP using BTC or I sell BTC to I sell XRP to get BTC. The second one is XRP USDT. I can buy XRP using USDT or I sell XRP to get USDT. The same thing with this BUSD. BUSD is another stable coin, but Binance stable coin. So it simply means Binance dollars. That is that BUSD you are seeing there. So don't get confused when you see it. Then BNB. You see XRP BNB, XRP BNB is Binance basic coin. Okay, then you see XRP Ethereum. Like once when you search a coin, it will show you the pairs that coin has. All right, sorry about that. Like I search again XRP, it shows you the pairs you have. Okay, so let me take XRP BTC, which means I'll be buying XRP and I'll be I'll be buying XRP using BTC or I sell XRP to get BTC. So that is just this whole stuff, what this simple thing means here. Then here, let me draw it out for you. Here, you see the current price of this coin. This is the Satoshi value. You remember when we treated Satoshi value in our last webinar? This is the Satoshi value and the price under it is the dollar value, all right? Then this is the 24 hours change 
This is 24 hours change of this coin, either in gain or in loss. Why is red is because XRP has been dropping for the last 24 hours. Okay, and that is why it's red. It's showing minus 3.66%. It means that XRP for the last 24 hours has dropped to 3.6 something percent. Okay, this is 24 hours high. This is the highest amount XRP has increased for today, which is 829 Satoshi. Then this is the 24 hours low. This is the high, the lowest this coin has been sold for the last 24 hours. Then this one you see here is the 24 hours volume. This is the highest amount that has been traded into this coin on Binance for today, for not today actually, for the last 24 hours. Okay. Then, sorry about it. Sorry, sorry. This is 24 hours volume. This is the quantity of XRP that has been traded in Binance for the last 24 hours. Why this 24 hours volume is the amount of money, which is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the money in this aspect now. The amount of Bitcoin that has been traded into X, XRP for the last 24 hours. Okay, so this is the chart. I'm not here to teach you chart because this is an entirely different thing entirely. Then this is the other book. This is the buy, the selling orders is the red one and the green ones are the buying orders, okay? Then if you come under this chart, you get to see open orders, order history, trade history. If I click on other history, now, I don't have other history for the last maybe one month for XRP, but if I trade, if I check, if I take it back on dates, I might see, okay, checking the past one week, this is what I've transacted for XRP in this my account. So you get to see your trade histories under here or your open orders. Any order that is here to execute will be here, okay? Then these are already executed orders. That is why you are seeing trades, already executed orders. Okay, they keep adding more. Now, why these things keep moving up and down is because people are buying and selling. Each of these orders you are seeing here is different, different persons, okay? Different persons. That is why you are seeing, because this is a global exchange. Now, here we have where you can then buy and sell this coin, okay? This is the buy. If you click here, you know you, are, you want to sell what you already have. Okay, so I will select a coin I have here. I have big. I will select big USDT. Sorry, this is not big. Okay, big BUSD. Now I have this coin here now. I will just show you an example of how to buy and sell. Now I'll start with buy, okay? Pay close attention. Now we have what is known as market orders. Pay close attention. A market order is an order that takes the market price, all right? Look at this price here is the current price of this coin which is $1.3 plus plus or so, okay? So if I'm, if I'm using market order, I'm simply buying this coin with this market price, okay? So I'm simply buying this coin with this market price. They won't show me, uh, here now, you won't see anywhere to, for me to put the quantity of this coin I want to buy because the exchange don't know the... Please mute your mic. Please, I beg you. Now, when you are using market order, you just have two bars. You see the price and the price is selected as market order. And you can only put the amount of money you want to use and buy because the exchange don't know the total amount of the coin you are buying. The reason is because it's using market order. And using this market order means that if let's say you are buying 20 million of this coin, you are buying 20 million of big and you are using market order, what is going to happen is this exchange will continue buying with the current market. Now you started buying when this coin is 1.3. If this coin gets $1,000, this exchange will continue buying 
at $1,000 till it finish buying down 20 million of this coin. Okay, so it will always take the current market price. That is the market order, okay? So when you are here and you're using market order, know that you are taking the current, you are telling this exchange to please buy this coin for me at the current price. Any coin, any price it is at the moment is the price I want to buy. That is what the exchange will do for you. Now, I for one, I hardly use this market order. The reason is because they charge you more for this market order because it's on the standard, is is taking that, sorry, is taking that this um, market order, you are stressing the exchange engine to satisfy your urgent need, okay? So that is what they will do and they will charge you more fees for this. Now, I believe you now understand the market order. The market order simply means buying with the current market price, okay? No matter the market price. And as the market price is increasing, it will continue buying with that increase. If it's decreasing, it will continue buying with that decrease. Now, we come to a limit order. If you click limit, now pay close attention. A limit order is an advanced market order. I will repeat, a, mid, a limit order is an advanced market order. Now, in limit order, you decide the price you want to buy and the quantity you want to buy and the amount of money you want to buy with. Okay, that is why you are having three options here, three bars here. You see here, you have price, you have amount, which is where you type the quantity of the coin you want to buy and you have total, which is where you type in the amount of money you want to spend in this coin. So let's assume this coin is around $1.3 and I want to buy it at $1. I will simply put $1 here, okay? And how many do I want to buy? How many do I want to buy? Then I will, I'm buying maybe let's say 100 of this coin. Now, if I buy big at 100, if I buy big, if I buy 100 big at $1, it will be giving me, it will cost me $100, okay? So if I, maybe I want to buy this coin at $2 and I put $2, this 100 coin I want to buy will give me $200, okay? Now, if maybe uh, I don't want to type this, I don't want to put this uh, quantity I want to buy and I want to buy maybe this coin when it gets to $1 and I maybe I have $20, I'll just put, $20 in this total, okay? If I put $20 in this total, it means that I want to spend only $20 in this coin. So if I place this order and it's going to buy this coin, this order, because it's a limit order, it will wait till this coin will fall to $1 before it executes. That is why it's a limit order. It must be this price you put for a limit order to execute. It will not be higher than it. It will not be less than it. It must get to exactly this price before this order will execute, okay? So if I put $1 here, I want to buy this coin at $1 and I place this order, this order will remain here till this coin gets to $1. Then it will then sell off. It will then buy for me. Now, let me, I don't, let me use sell order to explain it more for you. It's the same thing, okay? The order, the limit order is the same for buying and selling, okay? Now, I have some big here. Let me see, I should have up to it is something big. Now, if I'm buy, I'm, I want to sell this big with this current price, I can leave this price here, but maybe I want to sell this big when it gets to $5, I'll put $5 here, okay? Then the quantity I'm selling, I can say I'm selling 50 out of my holdings, okay? So if I sell 50 big at $500, it will give me $250. If I place this order, now if I click on this cell, okay, you can see order has been created. If I come down, if, if I come down here, you will see I have an open order. <coughs> if I come down here, you will see I have an open order. <laughs> please mute yourself, please. If I come here, you will see that I have an open order. And you can see is a sell order, okay? A sell order and the price is $5. And I want to sell quantity of 50. The reason why this order is not executed is because the price I want to sell is higher than what this coin is at the moment, 
okay? This coin is just $1.3 now. Why I want to sell it $50. Being that this is a limit order, it will never execute till this coin will get to $5. If this thing, if, if you take this coin one year to get to $5, this order will remain here till that one year when this coin gets to $5, it will sell off. That is why it's called a limit order. It must get to that limit you set. For Point nine nine dollars will not sell till it gets to five dollars. It will sell off. Okay, so that is a limit order and a market order. Now this is where I will stop for the day because if I continue, you can't comprehend all. So please, we go back to question and answer so that anyone who has a question can ask and. Let's have it trashed. If you have a question, please raise up your hands. Okay. Franklin, you may unmute yourself and talk. Okay, Don, good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah, um, thank you for today's lecture. Though I joined at the extreme end of the uh, training, but it was worth, uh, uh, worth it. Ma, my question is on uh, BNAS, the last uh, page you just showed now. Now, okay. sometimes as of yesterday, I, I was trying to make a, uh, a transaction, like um, using BNB to get uh, chilies. Okay. Okay. And uh, I bought the uh, uh, the currency via P2P, and I was trying to just a uh, kind of a random checks. I was trying to that actually my first time, but at the end of it, I was unable to buy it. I have about uh, uh, five thousand naira worth of uh, 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 the coin. Okay, then it kept showing uh, something like uh, it must be a value of zero point five zero. Now, converting that uh, 5,000 to uh, USD or something of that nature is within a $10. Uh, uh, so I don't know the actual reason why I was unable to place that order as at that particular time. Okay. Now, uh, Binance, the minimum amount of order you can execute is $10 orders upwards, okay? When you are using USDT or any other stable coins, then when you are using BNB, that value it was showing you is the minimum amount of BNB you can use to buy. Uh, okay. So why, okay. it, why it was unable to execute is because the BNB you have is not up to the minimum. So had it been you change that BNB to USDT and maybe the USDT is up to 10, then your order will get executed. Okay, okay. You get it. Thank you. That, that, yes, I got it. Then again, uh, just from where your uh, mouse is now, Kusa, get down to amount where you have 20 big. Can you go down a little bit? I want to get more clarification about that percentage. Yes. No, this no, no, percentage? No, no. Yes, yes, yes. How does it work? Okay. I will use sell to, to explain it for you because I don't have... Uh, BUSD here now to place order, okay? So since I have yeah. big that I can sell, I will just explain it to you. Now, I want all to right. sell this coin maybe $5, like I said, all right? Okay, okay. And maybe I have 83 of this coin. I can simply type five. I can simply type maybe 50 of this coin, right? Now, let's okay. assume I don't want to type this. I just want to sell 50% of this coin. Eh? I toggle this okay. percentage. I toggle it oh, okay. to 50%. Now it has given me 50% of what I have. Okay, okay. So if I want to sell 100%, I just toggle it at the end. It gives me 100% of everything I have. So it's, it's a kind of uh, an easy way to fill, to fill this space instead of typing. If I want to sell 25%, I can just take it here and sell 25%. Oh, okay, very clear, very clear. Thank you okay. very much. 
Good evening, Esther. Please, may you unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, good evening, sir. Thank good you evening. for the lecture. Uh, I was not able to attend the last class, so I don't know whether the question also has been treated there. Um, I tried um, purchasing a coin on Binance, and I saw um, Gcash. That is, is like that is how you can pay the merchant also, if I'm correct. So I don't know. Are there other ways that the merchants can be paid that I don't know about? Please, can you help me on that? Okay, you are talking about Binance P two P. Yes, exactly. Let's go there now. I think we are we are in the market. Okay, what do you mean by Gcash? Explain. Let's understand you. Okay, like if I'm to buy. I wanted to buy a um, coin okay. today. What so, coin was that? And then this thing today in the afternoon. Okay. So I it I don't think it's not the way I came to. I'm not so familiar with buying and sell, but I went I clicked on buy and it took me to the different available sellers or merchants. I don't know the right word to use. Okay. Then when they said I should pay. That is, I should pay. They showed an account number, and um, I saw at the top because there were different um, merchants with different prices that they are willing to sell at. So okay. I chose the first one, which was the cheapest one. So I, I it's like the mode of payment is Gcash. Gcash, oh. okay. If mode of payment is Gcash, then what it simply means is maybe the person is using a mobile money app. Yes, that is uh, maybe the name is Gcash. Okay. Hmm? This one so now how is do I... different. Okay. Is it possible for me to get people that? Have... Okay, I think I we have something like Gcash. Yes. <clears throat> First I, I of all, did you did, yeah. did you put your BVN on Binance? Did you verify your BVN on Binance? Ah uh, no, I've not done that. Okay, that means your account, I don't think, is your account always showing Naira or is showing another currency entirely? Can you hear me? Hello? Esther, are you there? Hello? Sorry for the interruption, please. Sorry for the All interruption. Right. All right, I said, in your account, is it showing Naira like this? Is Naira automatically selected for you like this? Mm, I, I've not I've, I... Okay, because most of times is when you verify your BVN in Binance that Binance recognizes your country and picks the currency for you. Like here now, I can change this currency. I it. Maybe when I open it, I will. All right, but. Okay. But if your account is already, uh, maybe it's, you, it's already positioned as Naira, as Nigeria, normally when you come to P, when you come to P2P, you see Naira, okay. uh, Nigerian orders. These are Nigerians, all of them. You can see this is okay. 486 Naira. You can okay. see all of them. You can see Naira sign here too, where my mouse yes, is. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. so and always ensure that is Naira uh, currency you select when you come here. And you can easily do that if you just tap on that place you have seen Naira, like I clicked yes, now. Yes, yes, I'm seeing so it So yeah. if I check, I think G, uh -huh, okay, this should be, I think, Canadian CD, Sabi? Yeah, I that, think so. I don't even forget. You can see it has changed, okay? Yes. Okay. You can see it has changed. I can equally take this back to runs, which is ZA. If I go for ZA, now this is for South Africans. Okay. This South African orders. So if you select, okay. if I select this now, that means how I'm ready to be paying with South African account. Okay, so, I understand. Well, since you are in Nigeria, ensure that yes. you always select NGN. Yes, yes, okay. So once I go to P2B, I should make sure the faith is on NGN yes. and I can get um okay. All right, thank you very much. I understand. Okay. Uh you. who else has a question? Mm, sir, I don't really I don't really know how to pronounce your name, but your name stopped in Ja. 
<laughs> if that is your name, please. I'm sorry, I got to learn how to, or you teach me. Please ask your question. Okay. Um, the name is Awel Fijia. Okay. Nice. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your your presentation today. I wanted to ask uh, why you are discussing about that uh, buying and selling a uh, using the limit method, I mean the limit order. Yeah. Uh, and you said that uh, after you've you place your order, uh, it will get, not until it gets to that point, you will not be able to say. Yes. It takes a whole year. Uh -huh. It will not, if it, it, even if within a year, it's not to stay out to get to that particular point. My question now is, is it possible for you to cancel the order? Cancel? That is one. Uh -huh. Then two again, uh, I was discussing with somebody, and the person was saying that uh, because of this ban for this uh, cryptocurrency in Nigeria, uh, usually if people are doing all this PPP, uh, it would be a bad idea if you indicate a, a crypto in your transaction. When I mean indicate crypto in your transaction, what I mean is this. For example, now you want to do a bank transfer uh, transaction using your mobile app. You know, usually they put a remark for there. What is this transaction all? Uh, so in this case, that it will be a bad idea if you put anything that relates to crypto in your payment or your receiving uh, uh, of the money or payment of payment or receiving order. It will be a bad idea because if you put anything crypto that relates to cryptocurrency that is bound. Okay, the bank might block your account or freeze your account. I think that is what you're about saying. Your network is a bit poor. Can you hear me? Maybe what he's trying to say. So what, are, what is one going to put in the narration? Yes, but he's not even here again. <laughs> so I don't know. I think we need to wait for him. Who else has a question here? Okay, if that is all, uh, I want to let you know that if you if you ever, I will still take you in another class. Okay. I'm sorry, the okay, the, okay. Net, the network kicked me out. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, welcome back, sir. You are saying you are talking about uh, the narration or description during a bank transaction. Yes, yes, yes. All right, uh, it's a very simple something, okay? You just have to put your name there, okay? Either you put your name or you put anything. Just make sure it's not something that is related to cryptocurrency. It has nothing to do with Bitcoin. It has nothing to do with blockchain. That is just it, okay? Most of the times, I use my name, okay? So when I do transaction, I normally put my name there. If I want to send you money now, even if it's not for crypto, normally I'm used to it already. So when somebody is sending money to you, if you are sending that person your account number, also indicate for that person, please do not include any word related to cryptocurrency in the description, okay? And your problem is settled. Then I don't know if you can ask your question about this order. Of, okay, the order of a thing you said, uh, you asked if it can be canceled. Let me go back to Bake. I used I used Big for this lesson. Okay, this is Big, and I'm on sell stage. Maybe. I want to sell everything and I want to sell Bitcoin is $10 per one, okay? And I click on sell. What the hell, what's happening? Okay. 
the price is too high. Let me select five, okay. Now you can see the order has been placed, okay? Because this is a limit order, it cannot sell till this coin gets to $5 per one, which I have already indicated here, okay? It's very, very easy. I can easily cancel this order. And my coin go back to, goes back to my wallet. Then if you want to buy with this limit order and you want to buy it so quick, it's very simple. See this coin is at 1.3 something, something. You can easily take this price, okay? You, you can take this price here. Just type it in, 1.3, blah, blah, blah. You can just put a price that is very close to this price because you know, if you, if you observe very well, you see this price keep going up and coming down. Then another thing I want to show you here is you can actually take somebody's order here, okay? This person is sell is want to buy at this price. Okay, if you click on his order, the amount will be filled. The price will be filled for you. You can see. Just look at here. You can see it has filled. If I click on another person's own, it has filled. So what it simply means is, I just want to maybe I looked at this order book and I'm okay with this price these people are placing here, and I just want to buy. I can click on it, and automatically the exchange will fill it for me. Then. If I want to buy personally from person, somebody, I don't have time to waste in this exchange now. Maybe I just want to buy. I can take somebody's sell order in the sell section. Anybody order you pick here, it means you are buying from this person directly. So this person that has 6,000 plus, if I click on his order, automatically the price will fill for me. Okay, so if I place sell order, buy order now, automatically, I will buy from this person. So that is how simple this limit order is. We have other kinds of orders, but for today, please focus on market and limit orders. In our next lesson, we are going to treat other kind of orders. Maybe tomorrow, I know I, I can, okay. Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm feeling me. I'm feeling me, I'll be with you people tomorrow. Meanwhile, if you ever feel like gaining more accuracy, uh, belonging to a trading community, uh, having uh, somebody to give you that lesson you need from beginning to reading chart, understanding candlestick and everything, you can enroll, you can enroll in our course in Lumi Academy, it's an online course all you just have to do is, this is the academy. You can just take a course. We have an advanced course here, which will take you from this your level and turn you into a profitable crypto trader or an investment. Mr. Emmanuel can guide you through it. If you ever need to, you can get across to him. Meanwhile, this is just pure online school. It's not like maybe I do Zoom meeting with you, but I, I will normally do Zoom meeting with all the students, watch you, listen to you, give you more strategies and every other thing that comes up. And the course is a lifetime payment. The coin is just $50, but because Emmanuel pleaded on your behalf for this lesson, so, we, I'm giving you people 20% discount. So anyone who is interested can meet Mr. Emmanuel and get the course at $30, okay? So it's a video course. All you need to do is once you enroll, like me, I have enrolled. Once you enroll, the course content is accessible for you. And you can see the learning experience is very nice. Then this is the course content, okay? You can decide to pick anyone you want to learn. And also you'll be added to a signal room where I will drop signals at least two, three, four times in a week, sometimes maybe every day, but it depends on the markets and everything else, okay? So if you ever need to further your learning to more, to be more advanced, Please get across to Mr. Emmanuel. He will guide you through.
So thank you everyone for this night. I really appreciate it. Before I go, is there any other question you have to ask? Any other question? Okay. Yes, I, yes, I have a question, sir. All right, go ahead. I'm raising my hand. Okay. Sorry, uh, I'm not through with my question before the network kicked me out. Okay. Please, how do we identify potential uh, coins? I mean, how do we analyze the market? When we go through the market, how do we analyze that these coins has potentials to grow? This coin is good to buy now. This coin is not good to buy now. How do we do that? Okay, uh, this is your question. And also, and okay. also, and also this, this, uh, this platform you are using, I guess you are using the web, not the, not the, not the app. I guess no. you are using the web for what I'm saying. Yeah, this is the web. Is it the web you are using, website? Yes. Okay, you are using the website. Okay, please, we would love to also get the website for you if you can put it, put it in the WhatsApp group. The website of the finance finance uh, platform, please. I only have the app, sir. All right, I will share it with you. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, the question you asked about identifying a potential coin. Okay, the course I just showed you now will give you that fully. Then tomorrow I will walk you through that also. Is among what I will show you tomorrow. Then what we have basically tomorrow is how to identify potential coin, how to do from that is actually called how to do fundamental analysis, okay, is included. Then I will equally show you other types of orders in this Binance, okay? So that is that will be for tomorrow. Is is a large something that if I start now, it will bore you. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, do have a wonderful night. And if you ever feel like forging your learning, get across to Mr. Emmanuel, he will guide you through. All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and effort. And I urge you to keep the fire burning, keep going. There's a lot to be made here, a lot, plenty to be made here, okay? All you need to do is to keep your interests alive, the full cost, and keep learning and keep practicing too. No matter how little your capital is, you just have to start. This is different from Chimo. This is different from Fossad. This is different from uh, all these invest this, get this out because in trading, you have absolute control of your money and you decide what happens to your money. So maybe tomorrow I will probably tell you why Chimo is a Ponzi scheme. So have a wonderful night. It's an honor to be your miss. Thank you, Doc. You're welcome, sir. Please help us with uh, the video, too. All right, I will. I appreciate it.